It is 29 minutes after 11 o'clock. I've got to keep the door locked here, the studio door locked. I don't want Budgie coming in here. Uh, <laughs> been hassling me all morning about softball versus baseball versus softball versus baseball. Uh, there should be, and there is room for both of them, isn't there, in, in, the, in the world that we live in on this planet? Uh, but uh, there are some fairly strong feelings there, I guess, on both sides of this debate that uh, whether we should just have one sport, um, diamond sports. But um, uh, softball's got its place. I don't think it's as strong in New Zealand as it was 25 years ago, um, and partly probably uh, due to the, the growth of baseball. But uh, I think they'll go their separate ways and stay their separate ways, rather like rugby league and rugby union. You could make you could make a good case for combining those two, couldn't you? But they never will. There's no need to. They both have their strong followings. Probably with the same of baseball hey, and tell, football. But, but tell, if people want to play sport, they can. They'll play a sport. You're not going yeah. to stop them just because you, you don't think a sport's worth Well, worthy. it's the politics behind it all. How much funding should go to softball? How much funding should go to baseball? And uh, you know, it's it's a thankless. Just because you argument. like one sport more than other doesn't mean yeah. you can you can dictate to other people. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with both sports. I don't see why they should be fine. But uh, I don't think one should dominate the other. But uh, lots of countries focus on minor sports because they're good at them. Yep, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's uh, it's. It's important to that country. Softball doesn't have a large international profile. We know that. Never will have. Absolutely never will have. Won't even begin to compete with uh, baseball. But it's got its place in the scheme of things. And you could say that about a lot of our sports. Probably all of the sports are important to us. Cricket, rugby. How much interest is there in the world uh, outside of seven or eight cricketing nations tomorrow in this cricket test that's starting here? Netball, softball, uh, rugby league, rugby union for that matter. But they're our sports. It's all that matters. It's... I hope Budgie's listening. Probably not, is he? 11.31. We'll take a break. And uh, Jamie Mackay, some sports headlines. And I think we might be talking to Erwin Valencia, a doctor uh, who's visiting New Zealand at the moment. He's with the Pittsburgh Pirates, speaking of baseball. Ah, might open the door and let Budgie in after all. He's been in New Zealand for a few days conducting... Uh, clinics on the shoulder and the art of throwing in sport, particularly as it relates to baseball. I think he's been brought out here by Baseball New Zealand, but uh, he's a doctor, he's an osteopath, he's a physiotherapist, and he probably does a few bit of Pilates as well. And he's got some interesting theories about throwing and the injuries that we suffer when we try to throw too hard, which applies to a lot of our sports. We'll see if we can find room for him before 12 o'clock. Telfer on Morning Sport with Res V Plus. Order yours at abouthealth.co.nz. Radio Sport. In New Zealand at the moment, a guest of Baseball New Zealand is one of Major League Baseball's leading athletic trainers, but he's a man whose expertise embraces many different areas of the medical field, osteopathy, chiropractic, physiotherapy, uh, Pilates, and uh, training. We might, uh, I guess, call him essentially a throwing coach because Dr. Erwin Valencia's area of expertise is the protection of the arm and the bodies and uh, he works and has done for a number of years with the Pittsburgh Pirates one of the most famous names of course and entities in American sport and he's uh, with us here this morning on Radio Sport and we appreciate his time Dr Valencia welcome to New Zealand that's an extraordinary background you've hey, you, good morning good morning <laughs> it's an extraordinary background that you bring across so many different fields of alternate medicine uh, to training a sports team tell me a little bit more about your background Absolutely. It seems that, uh, and not to only do I confuse you, uh, my friend, but I also confuse my parents more than anything else. I think uh, the, the the lack of me sitting down in the hospital room, uh, just waiting for patients, isn't the uh, isn't what the image that my parents thought I would be doing. Uh, but rather, uh, what I am doing right now is um, just being um, being around the professional athletes, and particularly in the past eight years with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, my educational background spans uh, knowledge in the world of osteopathy um, and uh, particularly physiotherapy and chiropractic. Uh, I have uh, been lucky enough and fortunate enough to learn um, theories and philosophies of uh, some great New Zealanders, uh, some great Kiwis, um, Mulligan, Maitland, and Paris. Uh, it was Dr. Paris who I finished my doctorate uh, with uh, just a few years ago. Uh, who well, went? All of them went to Otago. So that's quite interesting for me that I went there uh, the day before and actually was able to give a lecture at Otago, which was almost a uh, full circle for me. Um, but I do currently um, uh, have a knowledge and, and a lot of skills in being able to identify and treat and rehab uh, the throwing athlete, the rotational athlete. 
uh, and throwing injuries, including the shoulder, the elbow, um, the back, uh, the hip, um, and uh, and everything else that has to do with the throwing or rotational athlete. Yeah. Um, I think every sport out there does have rotation, but the amount of stress that it goes through from the foot all the way to the arm or, or the hand as a physical object like a ball is thrown, like a cricket bowler or, or a pitcher, uh, will have many components that have injury. Has uh, medicine made any huge progress in this area of the maintenance of the shoulder and conditioning of that part of the body, or are you still in the situation where you're a bit like the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff for waiting for the injuries to happen, then you treat them? No, actually, um, way, way more advances when it comes to the preventative side of uh, being able to have uh, a correct educational system and training system from an early age for some of our kids, I think things have uh, worked quite well, um, particularly with the Pirates organization as the eight years that I've been with them. And the changes I've seen from the minor league players that we get when they're 18 years old, and by the time they get to me in the major leagues, um, they already have a system down. And those who were part of our system will continue their system in the major leagues, and at the same time, uh, it's very noticeable that they actually have a decreased rate of injury uh, because they do know how to maintain their shoulders. Well, what, what's the, well, so what's the key here to good shoulder maintenance, particularly, say, for a pitcher? I mean, you look at those American uh, baseball teams and they go through three or four pitches uh, in every match because of the, uh, obviously, stress that it puts on the shoulder. So how do you keep a, a shoulder, if you're a pitcher, in good condition? There's many things that need to be done. There's a whole bunch of exercises as well as constant care from a manual therapist um, like myself where we are constantly monitoring their the biomechanics of their body, uh, their postures, and looking at not whether um, they are starting to feed themselves into bad habits. Uh, I think as the beginning of the season comes, everyone's in full shape, spring training's there, you know, everyone's ready to roll. But then as the season continues with the 162-game grind, uh, somewhere in the middle there, some some potential to break occurs, and um, it, it's up to it's up to the sports medicine staff at each baseball organization to note whether that condition is something that could be uh, captured uh, before it gets worse, or see whether we've done enough to prevent it from going there and let him go. So uh, it, it's somewhat of a catch-22 because you do lay the program in place. Uh, guys will have shoulder programs included in their preseason workouts. They'll have scapular programs for stability, and, um, and they'll have almost uh, dynamic um, non-throwing type programs in a throwing motion, uh, which will you know, prepare them for the daily stress. But in reality, throwing itself is an exercise, and throwing itself does have its own strain. So like any exercise, progression is the key. Mm. I, I know there are some leading sportsmen in New Zealand. I was interviewing one a couple of days ago here, one of our leading rugby players who's had a series of shoulder operations uh, over the last few years and he gets better and he, he's back again and then the shoulder goes again and he's off for another few months and he, he's in this uh, rigmarole for a couple of years now. So does it follow that once you've had a serious injury to your shoulder, it doesn't matter how much work you do on it, rehabilitation, it'll never be as strong as it originally was? Um, not necessarily. I think you just have an increased amount. The percentage of you uh, repeating uh, the shoulder injury uh, increases, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will never be as strong. In fact, um, in some aspects, with some certain surgeries, and I don't know what kind of condition he has, there's actually a possibility to get him back almost 110% uh, with the shoulder itself. But I think that being said, you have to know that that's only one component of the whole body. Um, you get the shoulder stronger, yes, but then you have to consider everything that goes on above and below the shoulder. You have to consider everything that goes on with the elbow or the arm. You have to consider everything that goes on with the neck and with the thoracic rib cage and the lower back and even the legs because if all of those don't work together, um, then the weakest link will always be the one that goes down. Mm. You sound very much like uh, my Pilates teacher, and I'm sure you, I'm sure you make a lot of sense. And uh, I, 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 I wish you well for your time in New Zealand, uh, working with New Zealand's top baseballers. It's a great uh, privilege to have you in our country. Absolutely, I think more than anything, I'm more excited to be able to bring the education to the youth here. Telfer on Morning Sport with Res V Plus. Order yours at abouthealth.co.nz. Radio Sport.